Hey everyone, it's Nicole the Math Lady. I'm here to give you a nice walkthrough of the Algebra 1 curriculum for Saxon Math. Okay, sometimes I know when you have all of these textbooks and they're different colors and it's just hard to figure out like, which books do I need? What's in them? Is this the right book my student should be doing? <laughs> okay, so no problem. We're gonna walk through it together. I'm gonna show you, you know, what's in the textbooks and who should be taking this curriculum. Let's just start with that. Who should be taking the curriculum, Algebra 1? So here's the typical progression. If your student has done Saxon 8-7, which is pre-algebra, and they've done well in it, let's say they're testing at 90% or above on the test, that means that they are well prepared for the next textbook, which is this one, Algebra 1. Okay. Now, if your student is not you know, set on those pre-algebra concepts, we don't want to rush them into Algebra 1. It's just going to be challenging for them. So I, that's what I recommend going back to Algebra Half as a step to get those pre-algebra concepts down before moving to this book, which is Algebra 1. Let's show you the books. All right, so the first one is the student textbook. You can see it's hardcover. This is the third edition, by the way. This is what I have used uh, to make my videos. It's the most recent edition of Algebra 1. Okay, and we also have a little booklet. It's called Test Forms. I'll explain what that is. We also have the Home Study Packet, another important one. And then we have a little thicker paperback, the Solutions Manual. All right, let me take you through each of these and explain why you're going to need all four. Let's talk about that student textbook first. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is that there is not a separate teacher's guide or facilitator's manual. We all use the same Algebra 1 student textbook. Okay, there's, let's see how many lessons there are in it. I always forget. It's 120, 120 lessons. And again, lessons are short. You know, it's done of a spiral review. So what I have found is that they give you like a sliver of a lesson, teach you a little sliver, and then they come back a few days and teach you another sliver of that lesson, which is really a great way to learn because the students, you know, don't take on too much in any one particular lesson. Okay, so this uh, lesson is broken down into three parts. First part has the new material. The new material is where you learn the new material for the day, okay? And there's a couple ways you can do that. You can teach it to the student yourself. You could have the student read this lesson themselves and teach themselves, or you could have them watch my videos. <laughs> I go through a detailed walkthrough, a step-by-step -step, uh, video where I show the students how to do the problems as it's presented in the textbook. So my videos take for Algebra 1 maybe about seven, eight, up to maybe 15 minutes. So they begin to get a little bit longer as we get to the harder topics and we move up in math. Okay, so that is the new material. Second part is the practice. This is just a handful of problems we give the student so they make sure that they understand how to do that new material, okay? Generally takes five to 10 minutes to do these problems. Um, you know, there are some answers in the back of the book. You should know the odd answers to these are in the back of the book. So just FYI, <laughs> if your students just like happens to know all the odd answers, you might be like, hmm, are you checking the back of the book? It's possible. I'm not saying I've ever heard that happen, but. <laughs> okay, so what else? So there's, um, there's also um, an additional video that I give students because I find that some students are ready just to jump into those problems and do them. Others need a little bit more hand-holding after they learn the new material. So I do an extra video where I give the students a couple of problems and I say, go ahead and do them. And then come back here and you're gonna watch me do the step-by-step -step walkthrough. So I give them one problem at a time. And this way, as I'm doing my step-by-step -step walkthrough, they can see if they've missed a step or if they've made a mistake and they can immediately make that correction. This is still while the process is solidifying in their brain, we want them to be able to correct anything that might be incorrect. So it's optional. Some students do it, some students don't. Some students wait for like, you know, extra practice problems during the summer. If so, they have this extra video with problems ready to go. The last part of the lesson is called the problem set. This is what Saxon Math is known for. It's 30 practice problems that are done in a spiral review. Spiral review means that we are doing a few problems from today's lesson, a few from yesterday, a few from last week's, and a few from the week before that. So we're constantly spiraling back to previous lessons to make sure students are touching on concepts that they previously learned. Why? 
Well, we want them to have continued practice so they're not forgetting what they've learned because in algebra, they're definitely going to see it again for sure. Now, you'll notice that in the book, underneath each problem number, there's another number in parentheses. That number in parentheses tells you which lesson this problem came from. That way, if your student's having any problems, they can refer back to that lesson to see what it was all about. Okay, now, I do want to tell you a little bit about something we have on the Nicole the Math Lady platform called online grading, which just makes grading uh, and for you and the student just a little bit easier. So after students do their practice problems, they can enter it into our system, right? And actually, just they enter it one at a time. So they do problem one, enter their answer to problem one, and then we grade it. We tell them, correct or incorrect. That way, they get immediate feedback as if they're doing it the right way. I don't want them going on to problem two if they're doing problem one incorrectly and they need that to do problem two. You see what I mean? So we're going to grade it immediately. If they get it incorrect, we give them retries. And retries are super important because we want the students to correct their work on their own. I just don't want them to wait for you, you know, maybe a day or two later to tell them it was incorrect. I want them to know immediately, wait a second, that wasn't right. So they get a chance to figure out how to do it the right way. And we help them out by giving, remember that number in parentheses I told you about that refers back to which lesson it came from? We put that there as a link. If they click on it, boom, the video is right there. They can watch it again and learn how to correct their mistakes, which we know, super important skill when it comes to math. Okay, so it's not only great for students, but it's great for parents. <laughs> like I'll be in the convention hall and student parents will come up to me and hug me and they'll be like, that online grading. <laughs> because it just takes the grading off of you and you can spend your time really focused on, you know, what problems they missed and how do I help them get those correct. There's a few extra things, you know, I call it the additional stuff that's in the book that I want you to know about. At the beginning, there's something called the preface. That is where John Saxon, the author of this textbook, writes a letter and he just kind of explains the Saxon methodology of how students learn math. I definitely read it, it's worth checking out. Okay, the back of the book, there's a few little goodies. There's like an appendix, which is really a glossary. There's um, some answers, as I told you before, to the odd numbers of the practice and problem set. And um, then there's also, what is there? Oh, there's an index at the back of the book. So, you know, check those out. Okay, that's the student textbook. Let's move on to the test forms. The test forms are exactly what it sounds like. Those are the tests that you give your students um, basically every four lessons or so. There is a schedule at the front of the book that tells you when to administer the test. Okay? There's some pages at the back that are like scratch paper, but there's really not enough space in the test forms booklet. So I just say keep a spiral notebook and your student can put their work in there. Okay? So in this test forms book, it's just the actual test for your student. The third thing is that homeschool packet. This is an interesting one because half of the book, the front half of the book, are detailed walkthroughs of your test answers. It'll show you the solutions, how they came to them. Very useful. The second half of the book are just the answers to the practice and problem sets. So, you know, the answers are there, but I find that students need more than the answers if they get something wrong. They need to know like what they got wrong. So you're going to need, I think, a little bit more than just that homeschool packet because you know, front half of the book, great. Second half of the book, I mean, sort of useful, but I'm going to need a little bit more, which is why we recommend that fourth book, which is the Solutions Manual. Now, the Solutions Manual just gives you the answers and the walkthroughs of the problem set, those 30 practice problems. Nowhere is there a detailed walkthrough of those little bit of practice problems right after the lesson, just FYI. It's another reason some people choose to do my optional video, because that's where they'll get an explanation as they do the problems. But I digress. <laughs> so definitely solutions manual. We'll walk through it. Your students can see if they made a mistake, where they made it. And that's it. That's my walkthrough of the Algebra 1 Saxon Math curriculum. Okay, um, hopefully that has been helpful. Again, we know who it's for now. We know which books you need and we know what's in those books. That's all I have for you today. It's Nicole the Math Lady. I hope this has been great for you and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.